Let's compare the top M2 Pro ship versus the top M1 Pro ship and see how they perform in various photo applications. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. If you have been following your channel, thank you. If you're new, welcome. Glad to have you here. I'll be sharing with you a lot of information and I highly encourage that you pause the video so you can analyze the result yourself in addition to the analysis I'll be sharing with you. I'll have timestamp in the description below. If you want to jump ahead, you can do that. However, if you're new, I highly encourage that you watch through the intro because this will give you insight as to the testing method and why I test the way I do it. If you find my content helpful, please consider supporting the channel either through the tip jar or YouTube super thanks. Anything that you contribute that will directly support this channel and also it will go into a funding pool that I will use for future hardware purchases as well. So let's take a look at the top M2 Pro versus the top M1 Pro ship. And on this note, we're gonna take a look at our test system. Both of these are stock. And when it comes to the M2 Pro versus the M1 Pro, we gain two CPU and three GPU. We're gonna see how much more of an improvement this is really going to give us. So that's the first thing. As far as the memory go between these two machines, they are the same. However, the SSD is a bit different in size. And we're going to address that in many of the tests we're actually doing in this video as well. In addition to this, I'll also have other test machines for reference. For example, the 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is the one with the M1 Mac chip and also the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra. It's gonna be in there as well, just to give us a reference and an idea for how these machines are performing. Now, one more thing I also wanna clarify as well is that I will refer to these SOCs as base or as the top one. I'm just really referring to the SOC or the ship itself. I'm not really referring to the memory and the SSD configuration on the machine or anything like that, just to clarify. A few things to note about these test configuration too. These are the ones that I've gotten in the studio. Many of you will want to request that I test other configurations. What I can tell you right now is that if you really listen through my analysis and take a look at the annotation I put on each of the graph, it will tell you what resources these app are really targeting when it's performing certain tasks. And this will give you a really great idea as far as if that component, if you're upgrading it or not, will be affected. So those would be the things to really think about. And I would just use data extrapolation to really see how the machine's going to perform because it's really a mathematical impossibility for me to get every single configuration in to test in the studio. And on this note, we also have to understand that Apple have oriented their ship into two different segments, a more consumer leaning and more pro oriented chip. They're going to give you more capabilities on that ship to link up to more displays, have more high performance core, more GPU and many other things that comes with it. And on this note, I'll be approaching this from a pro photographer's perspective as well, one that does light video, and all the testing results you're going to see are going to be based on a single app because I am interested how the silicon is performing one variation or one generation to the next, rather than seeing how the multitasking is working because there's so many ways to structure those tests and they're never really a 100% accurate representation of how someone may be using their system. And on that note, let's talk about SSD. This is one of the components in the machine that you can always expand once you configure your computer with an external storage device, hard drive, SSD, NAS, or even DAS. So when it comes to SSD configuration, my best recommendation I have for you is just to really think about what you're gonna use, how you're gonna use this, and also your future needs. Don't worry about the speed so much because yes, even though the M2 Pro with the 512 gigabyte version is running at half the speed of the one terabyte, but I'm gonna show you in the various tests I'm doing that most of the time, and, I'm, and I would say that in all of my tests except one, this doesn't really come into play a role at all in regards to like how the machine is really performing. And if you really want to know how fast of an SSD you need for a pro creative app, I'll leave a link to this video that I made in the description below that will tell you everything you need to know. And with a lot of tests, you're gonna see that you don't really need that fast of an SSD to really just be able to use your machine on a daily basis. Now let's talk about RAM. When it comes to this, there's a lot more consideration that we have to think about. The RAM, we have to remember that on the ship itself, it runs at either 200 gigabytes per second under Pro or 400 gigabytes per second under Max. Super fast speed. And if you're arguing between upgrading RAM or SSD, I would tell you this, that there's really no way for an SSD speed to really match the speed of the internal RAM in the system. And if you need the RAM, just go and really upgrade that. You're gonna benefit more from that immediately rather than upgrading SSD to get the faster speed in general.
And when it comes to RAM, you also have to think about the use case as well. And remember that is really not upgradable. Think whether you use, for example, a desktop and laptop where the desktop can be in a more powerful machine with more RAM and the laptop is an on the road machine only, or if this is your primary system. If it's your primary one, you may want to configure it with more RAM on the system. The other thing too is think about the way how you work. If you use a lot of apps, if you're like me and you have too many browser tabs and too many browsers and applications open in general, then I would configure a system with more RAM in general because that's going to give you a better user experience overall. The best way to really figure out how much RAM you need in system is to do a restart in your system, launch activity monitor, go into the memory tab and look at the memory pressure. If you're green, the amount that you have for your future configuration should be okay. If you're yellow or red, you may want to consider configuring your future machine with more RAM on the system. Now, the thing with activity monitors, you constantly have to peek when you're doing the task. If you want a program that will keep track of your usage history up to 30 days, I highly recommend using iStat Menu. And I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. I'm not affiliated with them, but this is a program that I use to keep track of my usage on the machine. And you're seeing right now, this is the memory pressure on my machine at the moment. So you get an idea how this keeps track of the usage for up to like 30 days. Now, when it comes to a pro application and pro workflow, I highly recommend just going and configuring 32 gigabytes. That is a sweet spot because even if you're not using now, if you should run into a task where you can use more RAM, the space is already there for the application to go in and use and you're not going to see any slowdown. So that's the reason why 32 gigabyte is a magic number. Now I've also run a comparison between 16 and 32 gigabytes on a previous M1 Pro and also M1 Max machine. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below too. And that's advocating why if you're a pro, you may want to consider getting 32 gigabytes to start out with. So this is how you would go in and read the specs on my system. And on that note, we're going to test capture <clears throat> and on that note, we're going to take a look at Lightroom Classic. This is testing on Ventura 13.2, Lightroom Classic version 12.1. All these computers support full hardware acceleration. So this is the timing between two machines. It is quite significant, actually. This comes out to around a 36% improvement in rendering one-to-one -one preview time. So what Apple have done with the extra two CPU and also the frequency and speed is really making that big of a difference. However, if you have watched my other videos already, you will know that this is probably one of the rare tasks that shows this big of a boost in performance. And I think that, <clears throat> however, if you have watched my other videos, you will know that this is the only one task that shows this much of a boost in performance. When it comes to the other tasks, you're not going to see as much. Let's take a look at this compared to our reference machine. So the Pro, M2 Pro and the M2 Max is performing just about the same. This is the 14 one, and this is really using CPU only. So the 14 one is probably running at a slightly slower clock speed or it heats up or something like that, and it has to slow down a little bit, but the timing is just less than a minute apart. No big deal at all. Now, what's interesting here is that the M2 Pro with this 12, CPU, it's really coming close to the M1 Ultra. And that's something very interesting to note. And you can see there, that's the result for the M1 Pro that I also shared earlier as well. Here's the result when it comes to export. I would say that this is closer to each other than the previous result. And this really accounts for around a 15% improvement. Now, when we talk about percent, numbers can seem fairly large when we're looking at percentages, but this really comes down to a little bit over two minutes. I don't think that's really that big of a deal, especially if you already have the M1 Pro. I mean, 15%, it's 15% improvement, but if it really comes down to like a minute or two, it's not really that big of a delta for us to really consider upgrading. Let's take a look at this in comparison with all our two other reference machine. This is the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Max and the M1 Ultra still sits at the very top, but you can see that the machine itself, the spread, it's not that far off from each other at all. And especially if you're considering the 14 inch with the M2 Max one, I mean, you're really talking about maybe about 30 seconds, 35 seconds apart between these two, the M1 Pro and the M2 Max and 14 inch. So it's not really that big of a variation. Now let's take a look at Lightroom Classic HDR Merge. For this, the timing are going to be just about the same. They're only about a second apart. And this, I would attribute it to a margin of error. And with the one or two seconds apart you're seeing here, you're not really gonna notice this on a day-to-day -day usage. <clears throat> 
All right, let's take a look at Lightroom Classic Panorama Merge. This is taking 14 Nikon DA10 and merging this into a 314 megapixel file. So for this, the timing between the slower SSD, mind you, and the faster SSD, capping this at 16 gigabyte, the same amount of memory between these two, the timing is exactly identical. So if you're doing a lot of these, there's really not a lot of gain to really go to the newer M2 Pro, especially the top chip, because we're not really seeing that much of a performance variation between these two. However, one interesting thing to note is that if this is a task that you do a lot of, going from 16 to 32 really cuts the time by about half. Doubling the memory from 32 to 64 cuts it down even further. And those are just things to think about. If you do a lot of these tasks, it may be a good idea just to upgrade the amount of RAM that you have in the system, but that one second variation, I mean, SSD speed is really not playing a role here. So this is an intensive test. Let's take a look at Lightroom. This is a cloud version running Ventura 13.2 and Lightroom version 6.1 support full hardware acceleration. Now for Lightroom cloud version, it's really just only export and it uses CPU, GPU, and RAM all together. And when we compare these two, they are literally just about the same. Let's add in a reference machine. So interestingly enough, the Max is running faster and that is because the Max have way more GPU core in the system. So it's being used more. It also has more memory as well, which I think this does factor in to play a role, but much less so if you really think about it. And when you really bump it up to, for example, the M1 Ultra with a lot of core CPU and GPU, I mean, there's really no comparison there. So this gives us a good idea. Again, looking at the SSD size, there are speed differences, but in this task, you're not really seeing it. This is starting to paint a picture that on a daily usage, you're not really going to see these variations. Now let's have a look at Capture One, Ventura 13.2, Capture One 23 version 16.0.2. When it comes to the import speed between these two generation ships, there are a slight improvement by around 9% or so. This 9% equivocate itself to around like two minutes of time improvement. So if that is important for you, I mean, these are just some of the numbers to consider. But if you can get, for example, the M1 Pro machine at a pretty good price, I mean, for just two minute variation in import time on Capture One, it may not be a bad idea to save some money there. Here are some of the other machines as reference. So we can see that the M2 generations or the M2 Pro and Max are performing about the same because this is a CPU based task only. These two have the same 12 core CPU on the system. Whereas for instance, this one only have 10. Now, one thing about Capture One is that it never scales well because when we throw in 20 CPU cores, I mean, the time only improved from the M2 Pro by just a little bit, a little bit over a minute. So that doesn't really show us that much improvement at all. Now, when it comes to export, we're also seeing some variation and this is a little bit faster. And the reason why this is happening is because of the GPU intense export task. And this one has three more GPU core. And I would probably argue that the frequency is running at is faster as well. This is the number that we're seeing right now around 17% faster. So if you're using Capture One, this is some things to consider. Another thing that I will also put into the mix as well is that if you're using Capture One, it's probably a better idea to go for the max generation chip, especially the base max, because this has more, 11 more GPU core than this one. And you're really seeing a time saving of around like four minutes or so. Now that is a bit of a price improvement, but that four minutes really account for close to around 25% of improvement in export time. That's where you really start to see the difference. And if you're, like I said, using Capture One, those are the variables I would consider. Now, what I also found interesting as well is that the Ultra is performing exactly the same as the M2 Max with Capture One because like I said, the program doesn't really go in and utilize the resources on the system really well. So upgrading your machine to like the Max GPU to get the best Capture One performance, probably not the best idea. Now let's take a look at Photoshop. For this, I'm using Lloyd Chamber Digital Lloyd Test, and there's three tests that I'm doing. I'll leave a link to his website in the description below too, but I'm using Speed, Medium, and also the Huge File Test. So first of all, let's take a look at Photoshop Speed. Now you're gonna see that the charts aren't lining up perfectly, but we're really only talking about milliseconds apart time with a computer. In a real world scenario, we wouldn't even notice that any of these are creating any variations whatsoever. So Speed are generally good on these machines when running Photoshop. Now what happens when we're working with a medium file size that's 15.7 gigabyte? A couple things start to happen. 
with these two, I'll tell you right now, when we set Photoshop to 70%, the 512 gigabyte is taking a little bit longer. And the reason why is because that SSD is a little bit slower and with 70% of 16 gigabytes available on the system, we're using more than we have already allocated to the system. So what this is really accounting for is around a three second time increase. Now, 15.7 gigabyte file, this is a fairly large file to work with already. Here's the thing though, bump this up to 90% of memory utilization in Photoshop and the timing becomes just about the same between a fast SSD and an SSD that's half the speed. So we're really not seeing SSD playing a role in the daily usage, especially if you configure your machine properly. And if you're using these files all the time at this size, you may be better off just really bumping up to 32 gigabytes to start out with because you're going to see it at the time get cuts more than half. And you're going to save a lot more time, especially if you work with a lot of large files. And these are the things that we really need to consider. Now let's take a look at Photoshop Huge. Yes, the timing on this 512 gigabyte is much longer because I mean, at 56 gigabyte, this is an extremely large file for anyone to be working with. This is almost four times the size of the memory on the system. And yes, with a slower SSD, we are seeing a timing increase, but if you take a look at the timing between a faster SSD and a slower SSD, you're really looking at about a minute time increase. Now that may seem like a lot, but if you're really doing this task and one takes two and a half minutes, the other one takes three and a half, and you're only doing this task every now and then, I wouldn't even worry about upgrading, especially if you're not going to use the one terabyte extra space that comes with that. So these are things to consider. And if you're considering between SSD and memory on the system, here's what happens when you upgrade the memory. To 32 gigabytes, you're cutting the time by more than half. So if you really consider upgrading, for instance, the SSD, such as in this case, or you're upgrading the RAM, such in this case, you're better off upgrading the RAM in your system and you're going to see that much more readily benefit that you're going to gain from that. And as always, if you really want the fastest possible, go with the 64 gigabyte ultra because you're really going to get the top performance out of that one. But this is putting things into perspective. How many of us would really be working with 56 gigabyte file on a base configuration machine that's available? Most of the time, if we are working with this large of a file, yes, we probably already gone in and upgrade the components in the machine, the RAM, the SSD in the system and everything else. So these are things to consider. So if this gives you anxiety, whether you need to spend the extra money getting a larger SSD or not, this chart tells you everything that you need to know and it's really not that big of a deal. So if you occasionally run into these type of files, it's just really one minute. And like I said, not that huge of a deal at all. Now, when it comes to video work, here's what I advocate. So for those of you working in video, I recommend going with the either the Max or the Ultra system because it has double the encoder decoder engine. In fact, in the Ultra, it has double that of the Max. But what you're seeing right now are export time, and this also includes any transcode time itself too that will get cut in half. H.264, HTVC is showing the same result. And when it comes to ProRes, this is more of like a mastering file type because Apple have built in a dedicated like ProRes encoder decoder, we're not seeing too much of a time variations here. But if you work in any other codec, which most of us would do, especially if you're delivering files to your client, then it may not be a bad idea at all to consider the Max or the Ultra because you can get more performance out of that machine and things are going to run much faster. So let's take a look at our analysis. Comparing the top M2 Pro versus the top M1 Pro ship, what do I think? So first question is, should you upgrade? And that's a very interesting one because the performance gain is there, but I don't think it's quite significant. And you really have to answer this question yourself, whether gaining anywhere between 36 or like 19% in certain tasks is really worth it for you, or if the machine that you have is certainly fine. Now, for the most part, I would say to upgrade to get the higher speed alone is not necessarily something that's worth it to go through every generation. However, if you need to upgrade the SSD, the memory in the system, I think those are better worthwhile upgrade that you can consider. Now let's have a look at an upgrade chart that I have created for those of you who already own an Apple Silicon. The best way how you can read this chart is plant yourself on the ship that you currently have and you will see the arrow flowing in the various directions. One thing to consider as well is that, for example, if you have an M1 Pro or like just an M1, 
It's not a bad idea to consider moving or upgrading laterally within the same generation because, for instance, the M1 Max machine, the price have already dropped, and if you want the top performance right now, it's still the M1 Ultra all the way. Even the M2 Max, if you want to get better performance than that, you have to really go to the M1 Ultra at this point in time. Another thing to really consider as well, if you have, for instance, just a regular M2 ship, sometimes going, if you need, for example, more GPU in the system, and if a task really just targeted the GPU heavily, like Capture One, it may not be a bad idea for you to, for instance, jump to the M1 Max instead of moving linearly and upgrading within a generation. So there are different ways you can really approach this and get a much better machine at a really great price point. Now, this is the slide for those of you that are coming from the Intel generation, and it's an overview of how you should configure your machine based on the tasks that you're really using. Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, you can see the ships going down from good, better, best for each of the generations. So Pro is gonna be really good. The better one is gonna be Max because it can really go in and use the GPU on the system, and if you want the top performance, it's going to have to be the Ultra. When it comes to Photoshop, what you really need to think about is just the memory. The Pro and the Max will run just fine, however, if you need 64 gigabytes of memory, well, you have to consider a Max because there is no way to configure the Pro with 64 gigabytes of memory. When it comes to Capture One, I highly recommend getting the Max ship because the Capture One can go in and utilize the GPU in the system and you're going to get a much better performance gain when you give it that extra GPU. However, what I would advise you not to do is upgrade to the top chip for the respective M1 Max and also the M2 Max. I would use the base GPU configuration because that's going to get or give Capture One the best performance. And if you're working with video, either the Max or the Ultra right away because of that more encoder decoder engine that's going to really benefit you when you're doing file transcoding, exporting files and everything like that. As far as RAM go, optimally for Pro, sweet spot, 32 gigabytes. If you can work with 16, more power to you, but in general for Pros, especially if you're doing this for revenue, I highly recommend going at least 32. And for SSD, my magic number I generally recommend is one terabyte because 512 is really crippling, at least for me anyway. But I know that many of you can work in 512 and if 512s work for you, don't really have to go and upgrade it to get more speed as I've already showed you in all these tests. So anyway, remember that when it comes to these machines, we're now getting into an era where the computers have to be configured in a way that we can maximize the use out of it. So those are some of the considerations and the result from the top M2 Pro versus the top M1 Pro ship. Depending on where you're coming from, you may want to upgrade to this generation or if you're actually thinking about getting a new machine anyway, like I said, an M1, even though it may be slower in some of the tasks, it's really not slouching that much behind. And if you can get, for example, an M1 Pro with more RAM, that's a similar price to an M2 Pro, and you can use that, I might actually do that instead of actually just directly going to the M2 Pro, the top configuration ship. Anyway, those are some of the thoughts I want to share with you. I hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell you're new, and in our retrust.